Hello there everyone, I'm Tyler Hughes, an undergraduate student at the University of Wyoming, and this video is about the AI technique known as a particle filter. They're a very powerful tool, but just what's going on may not be immediately apparent, so this video is meant to help understand how they work under the hood. We're going to use a particle filter to try to find the location of a target when all we have is a somewhat unreliable sensor that tells us our distance to that target. So we're going to start by creating our world. This gray circle is us, it's our robot we're controlling, and this spider is what we're trying to locate. As is usually the case with a spider, we really want to know exactly where this guy is. Unfortunately, all our robot knows is approximately how far away he is. We get an accurate distance from our sensor about 65% of the time, it's off by one unit 20% of the time, and can be off by increasing distance with a decreasing likelihood. So our robot is going to just wander around randomly, checking how far the spider is after every move, and it's gradually going to try to learn where it is using our particle filter. Since we have no information to start with, we create our initial beliefs evenly distributed. Uh, this is why it's called a particle filter, is that each of these particles is like a vote for where the bad guy is. The more votes are in a location, the more strongly we think that he's there. Since we have no information to go on yet, we just distribute it completely evenly. It's a random guess as to where this guy could be. Now here's where the AI starts to come in. First we make an observation. This band here is the distance at which our sensor reported the spider. It's off by one, but we think that this is where he is. And you can see it's very bright here, and brighter very near to it, because it's somewhat likely it could be wrong there, and then falls off further as we get further from that band. Now, the way the particle filter works to actually figure out where something is, is that every time we make an observation, we then sample forward based on what we currently believe, all of these particles, and how likely it is those beliefs are where the spider is, based on the sensor reading we just got. So we randomly pull from this whole cloud of particles to create our next one, and the likelihood of pulling a particle into our next belief is a combination of how many there are, which in this case is even, across all the squares, and how heavily weighted it is from our sensor, which in this example is its brightness. So now we sample randomly and pull forward, and you see that a lot of the particles near us and farther than our sensor reading have moved to the where the brighter band was because we're really convinced now that this is probably where the spider is. We make a random move and another observation. This time our observation was a little bit short. So we sample again and even though these are much brighter there's fewer of them here. So the combination of a lot of dim particles and few bright ones should somewhat even out as we sample forward. And so it does, it kind of fuzzes things out here. We make another move, and another observation, and this one's spot on. And as we keep moving randomly and sampling, we make increasingly bright areas that support our evidence so far. And so every time we make an observation, and we get a little bit brighter, we get a little bit closer idea. Now you see our votes have moved away from the edges, the particle filter doesn't think it's anywhere in this area, and it thinks it's somewhere in here because that's what supported all of our sensor readings so far. We move and we sample, we move and we sample, and you can see it's really convinced that there's some bright spots over here as well that have supported, but it's really really bright right here, there's a lot of particles supporting it. Especially when we move and get another sensor reading, this is incredibly bright, this is really where we think he is and we keep moving and sampling. And every move and sample, even if it's an inaccurate reading, gives us a little bit better idea of exactly where that spider is. So our votes are now, we're still not perfect because we've gotten some wrong readings, and we're somewhat convinced he's over here, which isn't accurate. But we keep making readings, and you can see with this accurate reading, we're really now convinced. These ones faded out because they were far away from the accurate reading. And so we're increasingly convinced he's right in this area. Now, as you use other techniques, you can tie this into the particle filter, things like active learning, where instead of moving randomly, our robot would actually move and try to get to a spot that would give it the most new information. But that's a, another technique for another video, and for now I hope that this really helped to show you how particle filters can be used. They're not just good for localization, but you can use them for just about anything where you want to keep track of multiple states an object could be in while 
having an idea of any of the states it could be in and how likely it is it's in that state. So as I said, hopefully this was useful and thank you for taking the time to watch and listen.